So now we are ready to learn about Lambda D, which is an extension of the Lambda calculus with uh, mutable definitions. So it follows the same semantics of racket. Um, let's try to, I'm going to try to formalize it. Sorry about the background noise. Today is a bit unavoidable. Um, so we have uh, two rules uh, for define. We are evaluating the expression here. And then on the red, on the right hand side, you will see this part in red. Uh, and this is the important part where we, what we want to say, this notation is trying to say that we want to mutate an environment. Okay, so the environment is E, as you can see here. And what we're doing is this is, this is a side effect, right? So what we're trying to explain with this rule is that we're going to evaluate the expression first. And then we're going to take the environment E and we are mutating it. Okay, so we're representing mutation with this little arrow here. Okay, and we're assigned, this little arrow is saying that we're updating X becomes assigned to V. Sequence is the same as before. So evaluate T1, the first term first, and then the second term first. One thing you might want to notice is that the environment is always the same. So you don't change it. Um, whatever is given in input here is what's being provided here and here. Okay. Another thing that is important to note is that because there is mutation, the environment E might have been mutated by, um, as a side effect of executing or evaluating T1. And somehow this side effect has to be observed by T2. Okay. Uh, so for expressions, everything is mostly the same. So evaluation of a value, just return that value. Ex evaluation of a uh, variable is the same as before, as in lambda um, with substitution. So we just look up on the environment. Uh, in a closure, you just return the environment. But here, the environment represents a reference, right? A reference to the environment or this mutable environment. Um, so finally... When we get to this rule, which is the important rule, what this is saying is we're going to evaluate E of F with the environment E, the one given in input, uh, and that is going to return a new environment E of F. And what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the argument. And finally, we have this rule here. What does this rule mean? It means we're going to have a new environment E of B that results from taking um, the reference of environment E of F, so the environment of the function, and adding a new binding of X assigned to VA. Okay, so this new environment E has all the binders in E of F plus this new binder. Okay, so if X is in both, you want to take precedence over this one, over the new one. Okay, and finally we have this rule that is saying that after you have this new environment, this is B for the body of the function. You want to use the environment of B to evaluate the term, the body of the, of the lambda. Okay. Uh, it's finally that returns the value B, which is returned. Okay. It's very important to note that the order of evaluation of these rules now matters. Okay. And I'm going to have another, in the following slide, I'm going to show you that a little arrow just to make sure that this is clear. But basically, when you're implementing this code, evaluating the, the function first has to happen before you evaluate the argument. And then that has to happen first before you evaluate, uh, before you create the new environment, which has to happen before you evaluate the body. And there are reasons for that, right? As you know, we must evaluate from left to right. Um, and there are side effects, as we saw before, because these environments are immutable. So we could be potentially changing the environment E, uh, and that change needs to be um, observed by the evaluation of the argument, again, because of left to right. So when you're implementing, it's very important that you follow this order that is here in the slide, from left to right, to have a correct implementation. So let's focus on the rules. What you will see is that we're going to need to define two rules. We're going to have to have a notion of updating an existing environment. 
So we have, we call that set put, where we take an environment when we put X assigned to V. Um, and we have another one called push, which takes, uh, you create a new environment by uh, taking an old environment plus a binder. That's what these two notations are. I'm just placing them in a slide by themselves so that there's some emphasis. And in our following lesson, what we're going to learn is how to implement this environment. Okay. So now um, we want to make side effects explicit. Uh, and actually, I'm going to leave this for a next video so that you guys have smaller videos to digest.